Most people think forest restoration means planting trees, but in Ethiopia's highlands, more than 1 million hectares vanish each year, despite generations of failed planting campaigns. Here, communities are fighting back with a method no expert predicted would work, growing forests by protecting what is already hidden in the soil. If this strategy can reverse 75% of erosion and revive entire landscapes, what are the risks if it fails and what are the possibilities if it succeeds? Under the East African sun, a green revolution is taking root and the way it is happening will surprise you. Northern Ethiopia's highlands Stretch across a landscape once blanketed by dense forests and flowing streams. Today, much of that cover is gone. Each year, an estimated 1.3 million hectares of land across Ethiopia slip into deeper degradation, an area nearly the size of Los Angeles lost every 12 months. In these highland regions, about three quarters of the land is now classified as severely eroded or at high risk. The signs are hard to miss. Deep gullies slicing through hillsides, topsoil swept away by rain, and fields turning to hard, cracked earth. For communities living along the escarpment between Tigray and Afar, the consequences are immediate. Water sources dry up faster after the rains, livestock ranges shrink, and families spend more hours searching for firewood and fodder. Decades of overgrazing, fuel wood collection, and agricultural expansion have left the Desa'a forest, one of Ethiopia's oldest dry Afromontane forests, fragmented and exposed. Once its canopy buffered the extremes of drought and flood, anchoring the soil and feeding springs that run toward lowland villages. Now the loss of tree cover has set off a cascade, less shade, less moisture, and more land stripped bare by wind and water. Satellite images reveal the scars, patches of green shrinking year after year, replaced by pale, barren slopes. In response, government and donor agencies poured resources into massive tree planting campaigns since the 1980s. Seedlings, often fast-growing exotic species like eucalyptus and pine, were raised in nurseries and planted by the millions. The logic seemed sound, more trees should mean more forest. Yet the reality on the ground told a different story. Without ongoing care, without protection from grazing animals or reliable water, most young trees withered within a few seasons. Studies across Tigray and the highlands found survival rates from these campaigns hovering around 30 to 50 percent, sometimes worse on dry, exposed slopes. In many cases, those efforts failed to produce lasting forest cover. The focus on counting seedlings planted, rather than trees surviving, meant success was often measured in numbers that vanished by the next year. For many local families, these efforts brought little change. Contractors and nursery operators benefited from short project cycles, but the land itself remained vulnerable. Farmers, whose labor was enlisted for planting days, saw little reward as the hillsides stayed brown and yields continued to fall. Skepticism grew. Why trust another promise of reforestation when the last saplings had faded so quickly? The erosion crisis in Ethiopia's highlands is not just an environmental issue, it is a direct threat to livelihoods, food security, and the future of entire communities. With every hectare lost, the window narrows for recovery. Traditional approaches have not delivered lasting results. The stakes are clear. Unless a new path is found, the cycle of loss will continue, with more land slipping beyond repair and more families pushed to the margins. The question now is not just how to plant trees, but how to restore an ecosystem and a way of life before the opportunity disappears. Instead of planting new trees across every hillside, the Desa'a project relies on a different strategy, one that begins by looking for life already hidden in the landscape. Assisted Natural Regeneration ANR, works by protecting and nurturing what has survived years of grazing, cutting, and drought. In practice, this means searching for clusters of native shrubs, stumps, and saplings, remnants of the old forest that have managed to hold on. These survivors are not always obvious. Sometimes a sprout emerges from a weathered root. Sometimes the promise of a tree lies dormant in the soil, waiting for a chance to grow. The first step is to shield these survivors from further harm. Large areas called exclosures are set aside and fenced or marked off. Within these boundaries, livestock are kept out and woodcutting is tightly controlled. 
Local committees, often including elders and youth, walk the lines, making sure the rules are respected. In some places, community guards are appointed and bylaws are agreed upon to discourage trespassing and unauthorized grazing. These exclosures are not empty. Over time, they fill with regrowth. Olive, juniper, and a mix of native shrubs begin to reclaim the hillsides. But protection alone is not enough on slopes where water rushes away and soil erodes with every storm. To slow the loss, teams of workers build stone buns, low walls of rocks that contour the land. These structures act like speed bumps for rainwater, giving it time to soak in instead of washing precious soil downhill. In the spaces between, trenches and half-moon pits catch runoff and create pockets of moisture. The combination of exclosures and stone buns helps the land hold on to both its soil and its seeds, setting the stage for a quiet comeback. We Forest, the lead implementing organization, works alongside local authorities and farmers to guide and monitor this process. Rather than measuring success by the number of seedlings planted, the focus shifts to how many native trees and shrubs are actually growing after several seasons. This approach draws on local knowledge and careful observation. Community members learn to identify which species are most likely to re-sprout, how to prune competing stems, and when to allow limited harvesting without setting back recovery. In some patches, where natural stock is too sparse, targeted enrichment planting adds key native species. But most of the transformation comes from letting the land heal itself with a nudge and some patience. ANR is not about imposing a new forest from the outside. It is about giving the remnants of the old forest a second chance. The method is simple, but it runs against decades of conventional wisdom. Instead of planting trees, the project protects what is already there, trusting in the resilience built into the landscape. Over time, this hands-off approach proves more effective and more affordable than repeated cycles of planting and disappointment. The real work lies in creating the right conditions for nature to take over and in building local ownership so that protection lasts long after outside support moves on. Beneath the slopes of Desa'a, a hidden world stirs. Even where the land appears stripped of life, the soil carries a kind of memory, an archive of past forests embedded in dormant roots, seeds, and microscopic webs. Years of drought, grazing, and fire may have erased trees from the skyline, but below ground, the instructions for recovery persist. In these highlands, the first rains after protection reveal this secret. Shoots push up from old stumps, seeds that have waited for years suddenly germinate, and a flush of green spreads across what seemed like barren earth. Scientists from McKellar University describe this as the landscape's own resilience, a capacity to rebound, not by starting over, but by drawing on what remains. One researcher likens the soil to a living library, its pages written in roots and spores, waiting for the right conditions to be read again. The real architects of this revival are often invisible. Fungal networks, particularly arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, colonize the roots of native trees and shrubs. These fungi extend far beyond the reach of a single plant, forming a vast underground network that connects trees, shares water and nutrients, and stabilizes the soil. Their presence transforms the ground from a loose, dusty powder into a stable, sponge-like matrix. One key to this transformation is glomalin, a sticky protein produced by these fungi. Glomalin binds soil particles together helping to form aggregates that resist erosion and hold moisture, the very qualities lost during decades of degradation. Field studies in exclosures across Tigray show that within just a few years of protection, soils begin to change. Organic matter builds up, the microbial community diversifies, aggregates become more stable, and infiltration rates climb. Where once water would race off the surface, now it sinks in, nourishing roots and recharging springs the soil becomes alive again. This process is not uniform. In older exclosures, scientists find deeper, richer fungal networks and higher concentrations of glomalin than in recently protected areas. Each year of recovery adds another layer to the underground web, reinforcing the forest's foundation. The seed bank too grows denser and more diverse as plants mature and drop new seeds. Over time, 
the land's ability to regenerate accelerates, fueled by the partnerships among roots, fungi, and the living soil. For local communities, these changes are subtle at first, softer soil underfoot, easier digging, fewer gullies after rain. But for the scientists monitoring Dessa's comeback, these are signs of something profound, the restoration of a self-sustaining system rooted in the memory and biology of the soil itself. The forest's return begins not with planting, but with protecting the ancient alliances below the surface, allowing the land to remember what it once was and what it can become again. Independent verification brings a new level of confidence to Dessa's restoration. Preferred by Nature, a global certification body, has audited the project and confirmed genuine ecological recovery across tens of thousands of hectares. This is not just a matter of more trees appearing on satellite images. On the ground, monitoring teams have tracked the transformation in detail since 2018. Erosion, once the defining feature of Dessa's hillsides, has dropped sharply. In monitored plots, soil loss has fallen by well over half compared to untreated slopes. Where rain used to carve deep gullies and sweep away thin topsoil, stone buns and regrowing plants now hold the earth in place. The difference is visible after storms. Fields that once turned into muddy rivers now absorb water, with runoff slowed and spread across the land. Infiltration rates have climbed dramatically. In restored soils, water soaks in several times faster than in the bare compacted ground outside the exclosures. This means rain lingers in the root zone, supporting young trees and recharging springs. Farmers and researchers report that the soil feels different, spongier, easier to dig, and able to hold moisture weeks longer after the rains end. Springs that once dried up before the planting season now flow deeper into the dry months, offering a reliable source for people and livestock downstream. Vegetation cover has multiplied. Where only sparse clumps of grass and a few hardy shrubs survived, most of the soil is now shielded by a dense layer of plants and fallen leaves. In many blocks, ground cover has risen from patchy, wind-blown earth to a living carpet that protects against heat and erosion. This living mulch is not just a shield, it is a nursery for new life, nurturing seeds and creating habitat for insects, birds, and small mammals. Biodiversity is rebounding. Monitoring teams have recorded a dramatic rise in the number of native tree and shrub species across sample plots. Once rare plants are returning, and the mix of species grows more complex each year. In some areas, the count of woody species has more than doubled, and the return of flowering plants has brought back pollinators and birds that had vanished from the landscape. The microclimate inside these forests is changing too. Daytime temperatures in the shade of the regrowing canopy are several degrees cooler than on the exposed slopes outside, sometimes by as much as 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. Humidity persists longer after rainfall, and the soil dries out more slowly. These pockets of cool, moist air act as natural buffers against the extremes of the highland climate, protecting seedlings and helping older trees survive the dry season. All of these changes, less erosion, more water, richer plant life, cooler air, are not just promises or projections. They are measured results, confirmed by independent experts. The Dessa'a project stands as one of the first in Ethiopia to earn international verification for ecosystem restoration, setting a new standard for transparency and accountability. The ecological comeback is now a matter of record, providing a solid foundation for the next chapter. How these gains ripple through the lives of people who depend on the land, on the steep slopes above Tigray, the revival of Dessa is measured not just in trees, but in changed lives. For years, families here depended on a shrinking patchwork of land, scraping by with harvests that barely fed them. Now, as native forest returns, new possibilities take root. In the shade of regrowing canopies, women gather in nurseries they manage themselves, raising more than one million seedlings every year. These nurseries are more than workplaces. They are hubs of skill building and decision making, where women earn cash income and gain a stronger voice at home and in village meetings. Beekeeping flourishes as wildflowers and native shrubs return. Honey, once a rare treat, becomes a steady source of income. A farmer who once struggled to send his children to school now sells honey, fodder, and medicinal plants from the forest edge. 
The extra earnings mean fewer lean months and more choices for the family. Across Dessar, household surveys show marked increases in income from forest-friendly activities. Food security improves as restored land yields more fodder for livestock and more fuel wood alternatives, reducing the daily burden on women and children. Young people, once drawn to the cities or the uncertain promise of work abroad, are staying. Some return to join youth groups that run nurseries, manage beehives, or help monitor the forest. The exclosures become a place of opportunity, not just for earning, but for learning. Pride grows as families see their own work reflected in the landscape. Hillsides once bare are now covered in green and streams run longer into the dry season. For many, the forest's comeback is a return of dignity, stability, and hope. The restoration of Desa is not simply ecological, it is a social renewal carried by the hands and ambitions of those who call these highlands home. Across the African continent, the economics of restoring dryland forests are drawing new attention. In Ethiopia, protecting and managing natural regrowth rather than planting every tree by hand has quietly rewritten the cost equation. Assisted natural regeneration, known as ANR, typically requires just a fraction of the resources poured into conventional plantations. Global reviews of dryland restoration show that ANR often costs between 300 and 400 US dollars per hectare, while traditional tree planting schemes can exceed 1,800 US dollars per hectare, especially when factoring in nursery production, labor, fencing, and repeated replanting. The difference is not just in the budget. In ANR projects, survival rates of trees and shrubs frequently rise above 80% thanks to the resilience of native root systems and seed banks. By contrast, mass planting campaigns, especially those using exotic species or without long-term protection, often see fewer than half of their seedlings survive beyond a few seasons. The outcome is a paradox. The simplest, least intrusive methods consistently outperform more expensive, top-down interventions. This pattern has not gone unnoticed at the highest levels. The Desa'a project is part of the Great Green Wall, an African-led initiative spanning 8,000 kilometers and aiming to restore 100 million hectares of degraded land by 2030. The stakes are enormous, sequestering 250 million tons of carbon, building climate resilience, and creating 10 million green jobs across the Sahel and Horn of Africa. Recent satellite data confirm that where community-led ANR is prioritized, the pace of vegetation recovery and water return is outstripping older models and projections. One scientist, after years of fieldwork in the highlands, put it simply, nature, given the slightest chance, is recovering faster than anyone predicted. This is not magic. It is the result of working with natural processes rather than against them. ANR's low cost and high effectiveness are now reshaping restoration strategies far beyond Ethiopia influencing policy from Nairobi to Dakar. Today, Desa'a's green resurgence is not just local. It is proof that natural regeneration can outpace even our most ambitious models. As climate shocks intensify worldwide, these highland forests become a living blueprint for resilience. What takes root here shapes global conversations about hope, action, and survival. Restoration is no longer theory, it is visible, measurable, and unfolding before our eyes. So, is planting trees a bad thing? Not at all. Planting trees is valuable. The problem is, thinking that planting for the sake of planting is the solution, when in places like Ethiopia, the land already has everything it needs to rise again if we simply let it breathe. And that's the deeper lesson from Desa. Sometimes the best tree is the one that was already trying to grow, and no one was letting it. This kind of restoration isn't magic, it's strategy. It's understanding the land, the people, the climate, and letting the soil remember what it once was. And if you're into this topic, how entire ecosystems recover without spending fortunes, and why traditional models keep failing, in the next video, I'll show you even more extreme cases and what we can learn from them for projects in any country. If you want, drop it in the comments. If you like this video, let me know, because if I see it truly helps you, I'll keep making more content like this.
breaking these ideas down clearly and without fluff.